Hello, <laughs> hello, hello, welcome to episode uh, 102 of Fang and the Bang with uh, Gangrel, myself, and, and the return of uh, Nicole, or maybe now she's just called Nikki, uh, Nikki Blackheart, and uh, Shady Ray, people always wonder who Shady Ray is in the corner because they never see his face, but... Uh, it might be might be better off because he's a conspiracy guy and then he might feel okay. like he has to come and eliminate you now that you've seen him because of the stuff he's pushing and his agendas and stuff like that. But um, well, no, you have agendas that come in here and your mom defended you. Uh, I, I said, ran into her and I was talking to her and I said, I said, you know, Raymond's up. She goes, no, it's all good. If he's anything, it's just positive and good. I said, okay, we'll, we'll keep telling ourselves that. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, but um, so uh, episode one, uh, 102. So we, uh, we've had to do uh, 100 without you or were you here for 100? I, I don't know if you were here for the hundred or not. Like you've been in my A for a little bit, you've been on and off. On <laughs> was and I? Off. No, I was here for the hundred. Oh, I right? don't know. I wasn't here for one hundred and one, and I wasn't here for ninety nine. So you missed ninety nine and one hundred and one. I right, too, yeah, but it right? seems like longer. It seems like you've been busy because, uh, uh, not that you haven't been already popular like internet wise, but you've been blowing up with. The, I, I don't want to say. Uh, I don't want to say uh, your underwear, but like very thin, very, 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 very small swimsuits. Oh my goodness. On, uh, uh, yeah, so you you've done the uh, uh, jungle jungle thing, the Miami jungle. Uh, it was oh. a jungle swim show, hosted jungle. by orangutan, who's a pretty well known photographer. Right. Oh yeah, and you know, when I do remember you being here because you did one prior to that in Texas, and I asked you how you think it would feel compared to wrestling. And now now, you, I nerve wise, I asked you were you, were you more think you'd be no, more nervous about wrestling or more nervous to go out there like basically with. A floss on and <laughs> <laughs> like skin and floss and you uh and you said that that you felt wrestling was more nervous so now since then you've done the miami jungle swimsuit thing so you've done another session mm-hmm. uh, of going out there nearly naked and then now you've debuted uh, your professional wrestling career so how how how, how you, you still compare that you still think the wrestling was more nervous than the, the, the going out there half naked like i the can confirm thing? yeah you can confirm and how did you feel debut? Honestly, it was a whirlwind <laughs> of emotions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you go from the mental aspect of it where you're o- overthinking a little bit. And then obviously the physical side of things, making sure that everything that you learn doesn't go out the window. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I would say it, it was a lot of fun. I, I did have a lot of fun. Um, I got to do something that I thought I would never do. So that that in itself was a great accomplishment. So debuted on a full moon too. That was crazy. I didn't moon. I didn't realize that until you pointed it out and I was yeah. like, what the heck? Well, I was thinking <laughs> that, that Friday night you debuted on a full moon and then Jacob who, Jacob the Samoan Werewolf <laughs> debuted in yeah. SmackDown on a full moon. I was like, oh, it's an interesting night. Um, you said you said that you're worried about forgetting everything you learned going out the window but but, <laughs> but yeah i wouldn't even worry about that because this is so much to learn it's just every experience in the ring is going to be a learning experience it's uh I, that, yeah, that's part I of agree. the learning it's not it's not what you already learned you you have your basic fundamental footworks and this and that now the the, the wrestling you have to log hours of it now Ma- matches log matches were um like you weren't very you were protected in the sense that you waited a year but you weren't protected in a sense how I would bring other people in because, you know, even though I don't necessarily, did, I didn't work like that for me, but like the Ruthie J's or, 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 yeah, or the Will or Damien Fenrir's that I trained or, or even Raymond probably, if I can remember back, I think that, uh, I would run, I had an actual student show, there's mm-hmm. a student show and, um, so, and they would wrestle other, their peers, other their, students, somebody yeah. where you wrestle complete strangers with different yeah. attitudes from different cultures <laughs> yeah. where... I would keep almost like an, a sign uh, experiment, like a laboratory experiment. Like I would keep keep everybody with them control, a control, a control, a control experiment. Yeah, yeah so many for control. Where <clears throat> I would have them, per se, uh, maybe work a match that with that person that week, and then the weekend comes, which is kind of a cheating thing as a controlled experiment. But within front of a live crowd, so yeah. they would have a formula going in, but. But I would introduce, you know, like a live crowd to 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 within that formula and to to help. It was more of a controlled action reaction type of thing, you know. Uh, but they still got there doing their thing, and then yeah. things are gonna go wrong. But but they had an idea where where uh, 
and, and they were comfortable with that person because they've trained with that person. Where you've just kind of got uh, on Nelio and, uh, you know, CCW's in to where I run the school. But breakouts were pitched originally. They didn't have them and they were pitched as student shows. But somehow they've made them an actual show and they bring... Uh, I think they still call it that. Uh, a lot of... Uh, yeah. That's why I'm like... They, they bring a lot of people out and now, like, even the next show they're going to run is the Kumite or Kumite. How do you, what is it? How Kumite. Do you say? Kumite, Kumite. And then, you know... Uh, it's become a regular show, so you got thrown in the mix, and then you went to Tripping Animals the next day, Saturday. So it was back to back. You did, yeah. uh, but two different people that you have. I don't even know if you've ever met these people before. Uh, never, never, and never spoke to them. Nothing. Different trainers, <laughs> different personalities, different cultures. You know, yeah. Uh, they're both from different places uh, too. Yeah, no, Orlando no. and then Tampa. Yeah, it's a completely yeah. And if that's even where they're originally from, they're probably from somewhere else. Where they live now. Uh, yeah. This is where they live now, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're probably trained. Someone I have no idea who trained them. To be honest, so so it's a little bit harder to go in there not having anything. But this is the learning process. So, uh, so in a sense, things. you're gonna learn lessons the harder way, but they're gonna stick with you, and you're gonna remember them because you're gonna be like, wow, that felt like crap, or that felt really good, and then you'll start feeling learning the difference between the good and the bad, and, and it's just learning. So nothing's going out the window. It's there. <laughs> repetition, repetition, repetition. You could do a, a power slide. You could do a fireman's carry. You could do yeah. arm drags or drop toe holds or, or single legs or double legs or double wrist locker or top wrist locker or wing lock takeover, you know, on to a Cornish hype, a hip toss, you know, suplex, uh, super, you know, uh, snap suplexes and, you know, and so on and so on. I could sit here and name wrestling moves all day long that you've learned and you could do them with proper and great execution. But now it, it's, it, you're, but you're not in a controlled environment anymore. Now you're, you're in the wild, you know, yeah. so just uh, like, oh, let's throw sofa in with, uh, this battery acid and the see if it blows up or whatever yeah so so it's a harder but, but those lessons you're going to learn those those are that, that's on the job training and that's how i came in my matches weren't controlled i did have maybe i don't know i, I knew some i knew some of the people in the beginning like i worked norman smiley a lot but he was a tremendous tremendous black magic he's a trainer at the pc wwe now uh, Norman. So he was a lot of my first matches. Like I, I got a lot of, you know, I did wrestle a couple guys that, that were inexperienced, but, but I also at the same time had guys that were tremendous talented athletes and, and wrestlers that would lead me through it and knew how to get you through it. But we got very little, 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 like where you are like put in a situation where, um, they're expecting you to, 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 to be like a main player character in something. So, uh, without the experience, so it's a lot of different pressure and everything. But 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 that's the rush of it. That's the high of it. That's that's that adrenaline you're gonna chase every time. You get it, it's not the uh, it, that high. It's not sometimes it's the it's the ooh the tension and the stress of it is the high, not the not the actual success of it. That's just the that's like the payoff of the high. It, it's hard to explain, but there's it's so much involved. It's sales. Yeah, I I I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's like the so. process itself is more. Then, because yeah. once you're done, you're like, okay, on to the next one, you know? Yeah, which all falls in. <laughs> There's no jewel. The journey is the exactly. jewel. The journey is the jewel. And these these are part uh -huh. of the things you're going to remember forever. And you're going to go back on and you're going to improve on. And, and, and it's just only going to get better and, and more exciting. And, and yeah. soon you'll start traveling and, and uh, you're building. Uh, if you haven't followed her yet, you can go check out Nikki Blackheart on Instagram. What, what are your socials here? So yeah, Nikki Blackheart. Building. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what you got. That's it. That's what I got. You don't have it on uh, the X and the, the X now. It used to be Twitter. You don't have a Nick. You don't Actually, have a Nikki Blackheart. I, I, I know Facebook can be weird, right? But so uh, my Facebook, I, I still have it. You don't as have a personal. Twitter. I don't. I have. I, I mean, I, I had a, it like back in like high I school. I have a Twitter. But. I don't use it, but I'm not even sure how many followers I have. I have like eighty thousand. I, I don't. But people are still on there, so I still post on there. So people still yeah. go on it, like. I, um, I mean, I had MySpace, but that turned into all music and stuff like that. I still probably I have MySpace. MySpace. I wouldn't know how to access it anymore, but I'm pretty sure I still have a MySpace out there. Uh, yeah, MySpace <laughs> yeah. created a lot of stuff for me. Uh, but yeah, so um, well, Nikki Blackheart. <laughs> so if you go to uh, Nicole, uh, Rapol, I say it M. wrong, and you get mad at me all the time. So Martinez. Everyone thinks it's a so you have a very strong, very strong following on on that. It's up in the 60s, 70s, thousands of that, but. She's building the, the Nikki Blackheart. She thinks it's two different personas, but whatever. It's all the same person in, in this world, day and age. So Still get on there, it out. check it out, it give out. it a follow. And while you're doing that, 
like and subscribe on this damn thing because this yeah. might be my living later on. I'm gonna have to try to make this a job, but <laughs> that's not going very well. That, but uh, um, but so get on there if you if you like what you're listening to, even if it's just Gaga, you know, just give like it and subscribe. I, I think it helps in the long run, according to Raymond and um, other people in the social media world. So do that, and you know, we can move on that. So um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you sure. already asked me the oh, first I've question. Asked you stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's got this you already up, no? covered the first question. Right, so yeah, the second on. question for me. Actually, oh, you I'm get asking to questions? ask me questions. Oh, today. Uh, all right. So uh Plot so, twist. So uh all right, Raymond, whatever. I'm asking <laughs> questions. And that means the I got one. that means I gotta read and then show my uh my my lack of education here. So uh question for Nicole. Uh what stood out to you as a learning lesson during your matches? And something you need to work on. Okay, well, that was what we are just talking about. So what, Nicole? Oh, I should have just looked at that and then asked you. So, Nicole, <laughs> that's uh, fine, that's so fine. Like, like, what am I reading now? I should have just looked over there and read that. So, so I, we were already talking about it. So, right, um, right. So I, oh, I already forgot my question. So, <laughs> what, 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 I, so we're, 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 I was talking about lessons, actually, and, 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 mm-hmm. and the matches are being a learning experience. So did anything stand out to you? Uh, what you maybe yeah. trained in class or so something... So what you learned in class, and then as you went into a show, did something stand out positive, negative? Did think something not go the way you thought it would? Something go better? Or did it all fall apart? Yeah. What was your experience in that sense, like training versus the actual uh, yeah. game speed, show speed? Thing? I'll bring up everything you always talk about. Um, whenever you say everything that you talk about in the match can go like completely different than what you called. Mm-hmm. So that's why you always say like you know when you're calling a match, focus on the main moves, start with the finish. And then build up from there because a lot can change leading up to the finish. So that's something that stood out to me completely was, you know, stop calling everything because one wrong move and then you completely miss your spot. And then now you're trying to, you know, get back on track to everything that you called ahead of time. So I think that that was like the main thing that stood out to me. I am not against (laughs) this generation of calling everything in the back. I mean, I would lie, be lying if I said matches i've done in the attitude era that like uh, on tv that like 80 percent of it wasn't called but but i am against worrying about that match to up to the point because um you know you call it in my mind you, you have a finish this is the ending of the story you know you should have the ability and talent to be able to tell the story up to that finish without having to put it together like more of an action reaction and a vibe and an energy type of thing and a feel because things are going to change out there um, with, in your case, you're working people you never worked before. You don't know their experience level of training or where they trained or who trained them or what they can and can't do until you get in there and get in the ring. So right. to, to, to worry and stress about things all day long or all week long, I, I can see these people calling all these matches. I, I think it's insane on my end because I go, nothing has ever gone like the way somebody's planned it. So you have to trust your training and your instincts and you got to rely on, 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 on being able to feel feel that crowd and, and audible and, 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 and have confidence that you're trained well enough to get to that finish. You know where you want to go. You know the end of the story. You know you know the story you're trying to tell and the destination. So you should be able to do that naturally. Sure, you got to call maybe an open sequence, a cutoff spot, and you know right. maybe a particular comeback or something like that or, or turn around. Little things like that, but to, to, to stress about it and to try to remember all that. And then that's why I think that people should be able to work a match and call a match uh, Without calling anything, they should be able to go in a ring, start to finish, and they should do that all the time. So you have that comfort, comfortability level, the confidence to know, like, all right, so when we do call this, if something goes wrong, it's not going to be like, let's uh, do like five schoolboys or three schoolboys particularly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like, so uh, not that you were doing schoolboys, but both were lost, and then that's what ended up happening, repeated schoolboys, which, which you know, they could edit that out, but, you know, in front of a live crowd, you, you feel kind of weird or you'll feel weird like oh wow, that's cool because that's you don't have the confidence to just okay i'm gonna kick her and go into a finish or all right this didn't go well that didn't go well i throw that out this is where we're at at the end this is the ending the bottom line it's 80 20 me boom let me hit her with my finish and get that clean in there and instead of trying to to work through the lead-ups to it sometimes you just gotta take what's there you don't go around the world to what Cross the street. Cross the street, exactly. You don't make a blizzard out of a fart. A fart, <laughs> exactly. So you know, uh, you just you, you don't make a blizzard out of it. You're just like, all right, boom, it's a fart, it's a fart, we're done. Um, all right, I need to do this. This is my finish. This is where we need to be. I, these things aren't lining up. 
let's just hit that finish. We're not going to go around the world to just cross the street. Let's just cross the street because this is where we're going to be. One, two, three. This is, this is this is the ending. It was nothing fancy about it. It was 80-20. I'm supposed to be the more dominant person. And it's my time. It'll be their time. Someone, you know, and you're going to do that favor for somebody else. So, you know, uh, yeah, to, 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 to get caught up and then trying to make it work, make it work, make it work. That That's just, that's probably a lesson I think you might have learned there. You know, like, okay, because, you know, they broke it down and said, hey, it's 80-20 or 70-30. And then it ended up being like 60, 40, maybe the wrong direction because <laughs> of trying to fix right. something that fell out of place in the called sequences that went wrong or didn't happen. And then the trying to fix it ended up spinning something 60, 40 and, and, and coming off across like that. So that should be the biggest lesson there. Uh, this should be in class, not even on, on this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, and we're back from a break because apparently we have we have a guard dog uh, in the studio. His name is Rex, and Rex does not like Jehovah Witnesses. So <laughs> Jehovah Witnesses are banging on the door out there, and the dog was going on. So, so uh, to all you Jehovah Witnesses, are you saved? Or, 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 I don't I don't know what this means. I do know I have an experience with Jehovah Witnesses though. And like Susan's not going to want to hear this, but yeah, we'll probably leave. Well, this out no, for no, now. no, it's all right. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you about it. I can't remember right what now. day it is. What day did they come knocking on the door on the weekend? Like, there's one day they don't. Saturday. It's, they come on Saturday. It's Saturday. Well, whatever day it was, I happened to, I was in my party stage. I was married to a girl out there that might have been a party or two and a dancer and everything else. So, bottom line, it was early in the morning. Now. These, these, these people was knocking on the door like 8 a.m. Maybe it was a little later, but it felt like it was 8 a.m. Okay. So I'm, I'm like, I'm like, who, who's at the door? I'm butt ass naked. I, I swing the door over naked with a, like, I was in the middle of something. And so I was like at high alert and they just go, oh, have you found God or something? And I go, no, I married the devil. You want to meet her? She's right over there. Oh, and they like, and the look on her face and I said, are we good? And they were like, oh, good God or something be with you or something. And they left the holidays, closed the door. Well, that's how I handled Jehovah Witnesses, Raymond. I don't think you, ha you handled it a lot nicer than I did. I answered the door negative, full alert, and okay. told him I married the devil. But I didn't marry the well, She could have been the devil. I don't think she was. But I think the devil moves in mysterious ways to a lot of people. Some people might even say the devil's working through you, Nikki Blackheart. But ah, not gonna, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. I'm a woman of God. Not even going to go there. But you might be the tool of Satan himself. Like, oh, nah, man, with the, I don't going, mess with um, Satan. Coming in here with your Baccarat or whatever perfume on <laughs> Raymond says you have. And uh, I'm, I'm still a little disturbed that Raymond knows that. Like, Raymond's a bachelor, man, but he, he must know his perfumes over there. Like. But <laughs> I don't know. Him? I don't know. I might. I would pick up a That's Chanel cool. smell. I would. I would know Chanel. That's usually what I wear. Um, maybe flowers or whatever Coco. that one. I might know that. Daisy. Over, uh, Daisy. Yeah. Um, certainly. Smells and, good. Um, but uh, Clinique. Uh, I like a lot of Cliniques. They're clean. You know. They're 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 not overly priced. They're moderately priced and smell very good and clean. I like their skincare. Not that I know much about women's perfumes. And... <laughs> Susan wants one. I, I, God, she killed me. I can't even think of it, but I get it. But she has like two bottles of it now. I think I had her daughter. I'd already got her. So she's she's perfumed up. But I, I can never remember it. I got to go back and look at it to order it. But it's another nice one. It's a nice one. It smells good. Nice. So I like where she wears that. But um, nah, enough of that. So Jehovah, <laughs> sorry, Jehovah, like, if I offended anybody. <laughs> like, but like, uh, if you're wondering, I believe in God and I'm trying to walk a path. So, like, you know, I'm just joking. <laughs> I shouldn't have like, like offend anybody. So, all right. So back uh, before that, before that, uh, back to the uh, something you need to work on. So, boom. So I, I walk away from this. Besides the obvious, like we've got to work on, you know, everything all the time. Um, everything all the time sounds like God is great all the time. But uh, go ahead. Everything all the time. What do you think? What do you feel like you need? What did you take away from it? And you feel like you need to concentrate on on uh, maybe dialing it in or just from that match what did you take i would from? say three things um the main thing would be selling so that's something that i a thousand percent have to work on registering so can, and selling yeah there's a difference between registering and, selling and, and a full-on sell but yeah go on. um second thing i would say that i really got to work on is just before doing anything just going through everything that i feel confident doing all the moves that i feel confident doing and then incorporating the best ones depending you know who my mm -hmm. opponent is and mm -hmm. what it makes sense with them instead of just like doing all the basic stuff over mm -hmm. and over and over actually incorporate the mm -hmm. things that i learned and then what was the third thing i was thinking about mm -hmm. oh and then also knowing how to recover if there is a spot that was missed you know mm -hmm. knowing how to okay maybe this didn't work out what else can we incorporate in there to get to the finish I would say those are the main three things. 
I should work on. I I heard thinking a lot, and and that's the first thing I think you shouldn't do (laughs) is like less thinking, more more action, reaction. Trust your instincts and 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 have fun because these are your 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 first matches, and and you're not gonna ever. Uh, if you're a true perfection, you're not ever gonna feel like it's perfect in your eyes, and and uh, nobody in the audience knows what and what you're gonna do. So you gotta do it with confidence. You need to have fun and uh, take a little bit more control in there and trust yourself. But um, but, but congratulations and thank you and, uh, you're and thank you for teaching me everything that I needed to know for that and you oh, know I being will. there. Yeah, we I will. would have freaked out if he wasn't there so i'm, um, I'm really happy that you were I'm able to be there for my debut and not only that um, but also teaching me you, you um, did say it if you give me six months i'll give you six years and i feel like that's just the beginning of everything so very grateful for you and all the times you yelled at me and made me cry and for also <laughs> still accepting me even after you told me to quit the first day that i showed up <laughs> <laughs> just trying to give you the best advice i could get the hell out of there before you, like, before you turn your life over to professional wrestling so, you know. <laughs> The opposite of like Joe Boyd is they're trying to talk you into turning like over to, to Christ or Lord or whatever they're preaching or pitching. Uh, wrestling is like, get out of here, save yourself, run, 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 run before you get into this cult and commune of craziness and and, 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 and and mixed emotions and heartbreak and loop-de-loops and hoop-de-hoops and highs and lows. And, I mean, that's life in general. But, uh, but, so. but uh, it is, but wrestling can be a little bit more intense. Um, but it's great it's <laughs> awesome and i love it i, I would, wouldn't have chose i wouldn't change anything i've done uh, all the way down to where up what what is currently and going on in my life now so uh, i love it professional wrestling i owe it everything it owes me nothing um it saved me from being in the streets it gave me a purpose gave me a reason to um, push forward and and move on and, and do the things i've done i've seen the world without being yelled at to do push-ups and bullets flying over my head. So I'm very blessed and very grateful for professional wrestling and everything it's done for me. And hey, wait, hopefully the you have the... Thing, the push-up thing and being yelled at. I'm like, I can still say that. We... <laughs> wait a second. I said around the world. Oh, okay. that. Like, so I did like that. I, I'm like, uh, but, 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 but I've done my share of squats and push-ups and deck of cards coming in. But it weren't forced on me. It, 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 was, it was at free will because helped, they, yeah. the people that were doing it and... And I wanted it, and so I did it. So it wasn't like you gotta do it. It was like, oh, I we're doing it. Do it was it. a lead by an example thing. And it, Raymond will tell you, like before the knees and some of the injuries I had, I I squatted and did all this the drills with everybody just so I wouldn't ask you to do something I wouldn't do. But then eventually my body's gotten to where I can't do it. And then I also come to the point of thinking like, you gotta get in shape on your own time. I need to teach you more, spend more time teaching you how to wrestle or, or giving you the opportunity to learn how to wrestle than to. To watch you do your squats and push-ups to get in shape on my watch. I'm like, come on, man. You should already be doing that at home. You should already be committed on that fitness journey before you ever came in there prepared. To, and um, you should be coming in here just to, to, to focus on uh, becoming a professional wrestler. That that fitness thing, you should already be a uh, pre-qualified thing to have to do. So, yeah. But, but yeah. But I, I don't know. I don't, I don't make y'all do push-ups very often. It's very... When somebody rolls in there brand new with an attitude, then the whole class is subjected to to uh, an attitude check of that one person. And they don't usually come back, do they? They just usually... They don't see them. Unless they're, unless they're a certain person I'm not going to name. And then they come back with their, like, halfway house watcher, like, the other day. I'm like, what the hell? You would you a drug rehab or something? You do some crime? Sort of, and then whatever, but apparently he'll be back, so uh, I'm not even going to name poor Sebastian's name, but hopefully <laughs> hopefully he's on the right track and journey, and, oh and, and everybody welcomes him back and helps him, because clearly, I don't know. Is it a HIPAA violation? <laughs> I don't know what he's got. He should have <laughs> came in here with some keeper. But uh, whatever, uh, what, what, what's up next? Do I got to read this and then ask something, or is this you? The Wide Six Faction. The Wyatt Six debuted on WWE Raw on June 17, 2024, after weeks of cryptic teasers. The lights went out following Jay Uso's match, and eerie music play as Nick, Nikki Cross, embodying sister Abigail, led viewers backstage to a scene of chaos with bloodied bodies, including Chad Gable and others. The group features Eric Rowan, Dexter Loomis, Joe Gacy, and Uncle Howdy, who dramatically ended the segment by blowing out a lantern and declaring, We're here. It's only been a few weeks since the Wyatt Six debuted in WWE, and there have already been mixed feelings about the stable. Before we get into a few peers in the wrestling world had to say about the new faction, I wanted to ask you if you'd seen anything from the Wyatt Six, and if so, what are your personal thoughts on them and possible potential? 
Uh, well, um, I actually did see it. I was watching, uh, mm-hmm. kind of keeping an eye on the Bloodline stuff, hoping and um, wondering when uh, Jacob Fatu would possibly debut. So uh, when I came home from teaching class, uh, hobbled in the door and uh, actually got my... Uh, butterscotch ice cream or whatever I was eating getting fatter uh, apparently you could, if you look at this video you can see I've gained 10 pounds of depression of eating ice cream and I gotta change that and turn that around but the Y6 comes on the lights go out and well first I see like rabbits and shit and weird stuff and I start thinking like what the hell am I watching Donnie Darko am I time traveling or what's going on and you know maybe a lot of that's like a play off of that kind of stuff and then person popping up yeah I see some type of weapon, like a sledgehammer, like they've murdered something. And here, here, I'm like looking, and I go, well, then I see Chad Gable with kind of a bullet hole to the head or something, and I'm like thinking, that's a bit much. Uh, on that part, that was a bit much. But but I get the artistic thing of it going, and uh, they're walking through this dark path of the, 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 the destruction and mayhem and devastation, you know. And, it, it, um, and I get there, so, I, you know, I guess it's a, continuation and and also paying tribute to to Bray Wyatt uh I, I don't know how I, I feel uh, about it I, gotta, I guess I gotta see where it goes I, I honestly think the bullet hole thing in the head that might have been too much for me uh and but but they're maybe getting a point across that they're not PG anymore and you know it's a different company and and you know uh UFC is clearly uh one of the companies the sister company or whatever companies that own it is clearly violent you beat each other and uh, you knock somebody out or, or nearly break their bone and they tap from submission or they're bleeding all over the place. So they're not afraid to go that direction. Um, I think for kids, but I mean, they watch, I mean, they play Call mm-hmm. of Duty and people are yeah. dying. I mean, they play very violent video games. It's a generation of violence and, and stuff. I mean, if you turn the news on, you'll be horrified <laughs> every morning. So, you know, maybe it's not across the boundaries, you know, but, you know, you, and looking at professional wrestling more. So I'm a bit confused. Uh, I don't know which way to go. I, I think it looked cool though, visually, you know, like eerie, and I like dark things, you know. Um, I also though, at the same time, I don't like. I think Bray Wyatt maybe it was just Bray Wyatt, is maybe, but I get the paying tribute, I guess, or something there. But what I can say about it, and I'm very confused. I got to see where it goes to before I give you really an opinion. I thought it was a little heavy with that stuff, but um, what I can say is like I don't know the Nikki Cross, but. Uh, I, I didn't even realize she was still there, but that 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 suits her. So that, they found something for her. It's like finding something for Judy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Judy, you watch Judy walk in, and you go like, Judy does nothing for me. She might maybe she could be a great, uh, does great things for me, but didn't do anything for me. It's Nikki Cross, the superhero in the in the <laughs> stages and the things she went through. Like it was very awkward watching that. And but but I think this suits her because like not that I'm saying she looks creepy, but but she fits that role uh, and sure. Dexter Loomis was another one that just was awkwardly weird with his uh, leather apron and another thing but know him tremendously nice guy uh, like him a lot as a human being and a person and a worker so uh this fits him so this is a place for him so this is a good thing for like people like I don't know Nikki but personally but I, I probably met her but like Dexter Loomis I'm very very happy for Eric Rowling uh Rowan big old red beard Tremendous human being, another great guy that I get along with, and hard. He, when I see him, he can wrestle. He can actually go uh, and do some cool stuff. Like he can really go. So to see him outside or something like this again, another person that looks awkwardly fitting in somewhere, but this suits him. You know what I mean? So uh, Joe Gacy, another guy. I, I was around him at the PC. Great talent and everything. Watch him in there, going, wonder what, what could Joe do? Where's he gonna fit in? This fits him. So uh, and uh, so. Uh, you know, with that being said, there's, there's three dudes that like I would wonder, like, how do they fit in the society? Or four count Nikki, but three that I personally know and that I'm very happy for that they found something. So I hope it works. Uh, wrestling is entertainment now. And I I like the macabre. I like dark stuff. I mean, I, I don't know. I didn't see what they did with Chad Gable after. Did he come back from the dead? Are people making fun of that? I thought I heard something. I didn't really catch up on that. I didn't see Raw uh, or anything this week. But I saw that debut and it was interesting. Thought the bullet hole in the head was a bit much, but bodies laying around, that's nothing in wrestling. You know, people yeah. get beat up and Hunter was hitting people with sledgehammers way back and 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 whatever, whatever. But to, the gunplay, I'm not about gunplay. I don't know if they insinuated was that like a bullet hole? Did anybody see it? Did, you, did they insinuate like he was shot in the head or something, or was he just hitting the head? But it looked like a like what you would anticipate. Yeah. 
So that's the only thing I didn't, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not, I, I own, I own, I have a, a concealed weapons permit. I own a weapon, uh, but I, I don't, I don't necessarily believe in promoting violence with weapons and stuff because it's, it's a violent society already and yeah. our kids are watching this and, and, and stuff. So that's the only thing that, that I keep going back to because that's the only thing that threw me off about it. Like, and, and, and maybe like, you know, Bray Wyatt was like, hey, you don't want to copy The Undertaker, but it's his brother, right? So that's cool. Like, uh, he's paying tribute and maybe they're just picking up. And they were doing that before. They were building the Uncle Howdy thing before that happened. So they were kind of on that journey already. So maybe they're just going to bring it full circle. So... I'm not totally against that. Just curious to where that's going to go. The only thing I had a problem with is if that was insinuating a gun. But maybe I was wrong. Maybe I have to go back. I didn't go back, freeze it, look at it. I didn't watch Raw. And the commentary didn't say anything about, oh, you're shot in the head. But 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 he clearly, like, he was shot in the head. It was dead. Yeah. Did you see it? I, I did notice the, the hole, though. Like, I did see it. but Like I, a bullet? I, I, don't, I, I don't know. Like, maybe I'm wrong. I maybe I have to go back and look at it. Maybe I should have pulled it up. I didn't know you were going to ask about this, to be honest. Or I probably would have went back and... Took a look at these things, but uh, Raymond doesn't send notes anymore. I just kind of showed up here last second, I guess. I suppose I <laughs> called in the middle of the night. Everybody said, Is anybody going to do the podcast tomorrow? <laughs> you know, so. Um, but that's the only thing. But but that's super cool. happy for Eric uh, Rowan, uh, Redbeard. Uh, super happy for Gacy to find the spot. Uh, again, like Nikki Cross, like that superhero thing. Was t- I don't know what that was, but this suits her. Uh, what she can do with this, I, I don't know. But like, uh, like it would have suited... Uh, a Luna very well. I think it suited her. She looked awkward in other things, and I think this is very cool for her. So, like, there's three people that I know, um, and, and, and and then Bo, I'm happy that he's doing something. He found something, too, because he was kind of, like, all over the place. Bo knows, or I don't know what Bo. He had he had some... He was just all over with his character, so, like... And I think maybe he was doing this um, prior to the unfortunate passing, to You know, they were building to this. So, uh, uh, the... Uncle Howdy thinks so. I'm happy for him too if this is what he wants. And I'm sure if he's doing it, it must be. And uh, paying tribute to his brother. So uh, it's awesome. I, I don't have anything against it. I just, again, a little was concerned. It looked like, a, to me, it looked like a gunshot to the head or someone would have betrayed that. But that's all. But that's cool. There um, you go. So. So... But I mean, I'm, I like spooky things, you know. I didn't bother the sledgehammer and this and that. Maybe that was a sledgehammer to the head, but I think if a sledgehammer hit you, it wouldn't look round. It, it would be like, <laughs> crushed skull and, you know, brain matter everywhere, you know. Like, the other one is leaning here, you know. Who knows? Maybe it was a pellet gun to the head. I, I don't know. Because he's back, right? He wrestled again, so he's not dead. <laughs> Chad Gable, right? Didn't he wrestle, like, last like Monday night or something? Could be like a zombie thing. I, I missed this Monday because I, I was late in class, but uh, all right. <laughs> Ooh la 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 la. Let's yeah, so move on. people have been having opinions about it. So there's been mixed feelings about the Wide Six. Jim Ross commented on the Wide Six debut, stating it will be challenging to make it work due to Bray Wyatt's irreplaceable talent. He emphasized that replicating Wyatt's success would be difficult and advised WWE to make a new group distinct and different rather than trying to emulate Wyatt step by step. By step. Ross supports the success and the new group, but acknowledges the difficulty of living up to Wyatt's legacy. And then on the other hand, Corey Graves expressed deep emotion over the return of Uncle Howdy during WWE Raw, describing it as if, as a home run. He watched the segment quietly in bed to avoid waking his wife (laughs) and moved to tears by uh, presentation, the presentation and the crowd's reaction. Graves praised the return for its perfection and the respect it showed to Bright Wyatt's legacy, highlighting the magical atmosphere and the meticulous care taken in the performance. He was impressed that he rewatched the segment multiple times, noticing new details each time. So oh, what wow. are your thoughts on both statements? All right, so I only watched it one time, which <clears throat> now, now I'm going to honestly probably go back because it's on DV, DVR and uh, watch it. I'll watch it back to, to see if I'm seeing the whole the Chad Gable thing the right way and stuff like that. Um, both uh, Jim Ross is not with the company anymore. Corey Graves is with the company, so I would expect anything <laughs> Corey Graves to say would be positive. I would expect anything Jim Ross to say would be probably what he really actually feels or, or, or like what he feels like. And I think Corey Graves does feel that because I'm friends with Corey. He's a great guy. He's a creative uh, a guy like that. He's a family guy. Um, 
you know, his dad was a pr promoter, his brother's a wrestler, Sam Adonis and Corey and Corey loves wrestling. So I, I believe that there's a lot of truth and everything in his thing, but I would expect nothing but positive when he's coming from an employee, you know, and stuff. But um, but I believe that's how he he, he probably feels in, in a sense, maybe just amped up some, you know, but I believe he feels like that. So I, I respect I, I I guess Jim Ross, yeah, you should take heed in trying. Like I said uh, earlier, before you read this, like the, the, the Undertaker, somebody to try to to copy the Undertaker. But but I mean, there was Kane in that. It was totally different things. But you know, maybe they're looking at it like a Undertaker Kane. But it was never uh, Uncle Howdy was never Kane was pushed. He feuded Undertaker. It was built and developed. Unfortunately, Bray's not here, and now you're just. You're, you're trying to fill the shoes with that. So I can see the concerns Jim Ross has too, you know, like, because Uncle Howdy wasn't over, but it's also a different generation now, wrestling, different, you know, you can push whatever agenda you want, you know? <laughs> I can go on and say, you did something, something, and have you canceled, like, probably, and then you have to, like, you're guilty into proving this. It can go and get this stuff over. I mean, people will look at it as them honoring that and, and see it all in a positive way, probably not a negative way. So it's just... All in the eyes of the be like beauty in the eye of the beholder. It's how you want to watch and see it. Truths in both, um, and and I believe they both mean what they say. I think Corey's is probably hyped up more because he's at the company still. In there. But he, he but he's he's a cool guy. He's a family guy, so maybe it, it, it truly does feel like that. But but I wouldn't expect them to say anything negative. And respect Jim Ross to say what he said because that's pretty. You know, as a creative person and watching it, it's hard to copy things, and you should take heed and be careful. But. I don't know about the whole change the whole group thing because people might not get it. They'd say, oh, why it's being so different? But I guess because he's bringing back the sheep, whatever, with Rowan yeah. and all them. So <laughs> I don't know, though. Whatever it is, it's going to be a. Um, uh, oh, there they all are there, right? So whatever it is, it's going to be a. Um, it's going to be cool to watch and see where it goes. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And it, it gives you that little spooky, you know, you had The Undertaker with Spooky and Kane and different things. And so you got the Wyatt 6 6 6 6 6. six. Oh, I couldn't say that drinking six, by six six, six. <laughs> <laughs> or if they were a sexy six six like <laughs> little uh, Rob Zombie and Devil's Rejects and stuff like that. And, but she's not gonna come across sexy. She just came across creepy, crawling all over, which is hard. People don't realize how hard that is to be creepy and spooky and and to do characters. It's a fun, but it is not easy in different arenas and different okay. things to yeah. to pull entrances across and to get out to the ring and disappear at a certain time and be at a certain point. And I don't know if a lot of that was, I'm sure it wasn't live. It was probably uh, 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 pre and post or whatever <clears throat> uh, production wise, but it's still not easy. It's not going to be easy doing live events and, and to pull it off. But I, I am super happy for uh, uh, definitely for Eric Rowan and, and uh, Dexter Loomis. Super happy for those two dudes not knowing them. And, and that John uh, uh, Joe Gacy found a spot because right? he's a cool guy. And I was like, well, what are they going to do with him? He's really talented, but what are they going to do with him? So he found a spot. It's cool. And she was super awkward as that superhero thing. So I think this suits her. So I, I think they've all found a home. It's kind of like uh, people didn't like, a lot of people didn't like ECW, but but it was a lot of people liked it. It was where a lot of people fit. Like wrestlers were awkwardly all over wrestling different places, but they didn't quite fit but they went in with the ECW they fit it it was a home I think they fit in this group so I think it was a good pick of the group and excited to see where it goes yeah they actually got some heat because um, they picked up heat and criticism recently oh. due to taking a photo with a fan at Whataburger the night of the debut that's the photo oh so oh is that what we're looking at I was wondering who the guy in the mask yeah. 77 so so it makes sense because so Whataburger's in Texas so it's a big thing out in Texas and whatnot like you like Whataburger I love Whataburger I don't think I've ever Whataburger had it. is like it's, it's a must have a Whataburger I mean Whataburger's good it, it, oh, Whatab I've never had it yeah never had it Whatab you never had Whataburger Raymond you ever had Whataburger maybe maybe I don't know. May, uh, I don't, I don't uh, think so. In and Out's a California thing. Whataburger is like a Texas. Uh, That's like, how you say In and Out all the time in Vegas. <laughs> What's that? Five Guys is uh, overly priced. Whataburger's the shit, man. Whataburger's <laughs> legit. <laughs> if you go to Texas, go to Whataburger. You know, there's always usually, if you're in a hotel parking lot, there's usually a Whataburger with a like, like parking lot visual eye view that you can hobble over to and get Whataburger. Like McDonald's. It. Oh, no, no, no. It, it's better than McDonald's. I don't eat burgers, but I'll eat a Whataburger. What nice. I, I'm not a burger guy, but I'll eat a Whataburger. I don't. I don't know why. It's just a thing, you know. Just it's good. I enjoy it. I enjoy the burritos there, the, the breakfast burritos and all that. It's kind of like a, a Sonic on 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 steroids Whataburger. Like 
I don't know. I love Watermark. <laughs> like, I think I've had Sonic once when I first moved to the U.S. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, so what, hold on. What, hold on. Let's go back. I got sidetracked. Whataburger. Let's go back to that picture. I want to look at the picture again. Now I want Whataburger, though. Uh, oh, yeah. He's got a Whataburger cup there. That's not very scary. And Thumbs up. So why did they get criticized? Because they're supposed to be this evil thing, and then they took a picture. And, uh, what do you want them to do? Shit on that guy? And, uh, what do you want them to do? Like, hey, no. F you, dude. Like, we're the six six, and we're gonna rip your head off and and disembowel you. And uh, yeah, no, it's a different generation. They damn right they took a picture. That that dude will remember that day for a lifetime. That guy is always gonna remember that picture. They may have forgot about it. Besides, people giving them a hard time and posting it up and talking about it on a podcast like this. Uh, mm-hmm. Other than that, they'll probably forgot about that. They probably didn't even know when they go. Well, why'd you take a picture with somebody? They're probably going, what are you talking about? Well, what Whataburger? Because we've probably had 100 Whataburgers since then. But that dude in that Mav 77 shirt, look at his smile on it. He's going to remember. He doesn't even, he probably never smiles in his life, but he's trying to smile right there because he's so happy. Aww. Like, And, um, I mean, Uncle Howdy, I don't know what the Uncle Howdy character is. He's kind of weird, so he can smile. But, well, Nikki Cross probably shouldn't be smiling. But the other two aren't really smiling. They still look like creatures to me on the three. Uh, Gacy and... Rowan and Loomis, they look scary. So they're like freaking serial killers. They're like, all right, we got to take a picture. Okay. Yeah. But like, what did they get criticized about? Who put it up there, Raymond? What did they get criticized for? Next slide. For what? Next slide. Oh, what? It's right here. Bully Ray and Mark Henry criticized oh, okay. the white six social media photo right. taken at Whataburger after the WWE debut. Mark Henry argued it undermined their professional image and suggested a fine for breaking kayfabe. Bully Ray compared the incident to seeing... Kiss without, without makeup, makeup yeah, that makes sense. emphasizing the importance of maintaining the mystique and protecting the wrestling industry's magic. Okay. So question for you. Do you agree with Mark Henry and Bully that wrestlers should always stay in character in public and how important in maintaining KFEB for success success of new wrestling stables like Wyatt Six Six? Wow, I well, okay, <laughs> well. Do I agree with them? Yes, if it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Do I think wrestling should be like that now? Yes, I think characters should be tacked in. There should be some magic to it. But do I accept and understand where wrestling is at today and that it's it's, it's entertainment? Like, I wrestle as a vampire and uh, <laughs> bro, I, I'm not going to have teeth on a Whataburger. I'm going to Whataburger to fuck a Whataburger. <laughs> like, you know, and if a fan comes up to me, I, I'm not going to say no because, like I said, I believe that uh, I'm at the end of my career i'm at the end of my journey though so i mean maybe it could look at it different that way but i'm not what well, even no even I, I always stayed in character even when i took a picture as gang girl i had I had black nail polish on i, I dressed apart i i necessarily like maybe what i could disagree with that picture is i believe that they should be dressed character like if their characters are darker maybe they should be um maybe wearing uh I don't know, uh, at least a, not a DSI t-shirt or devil worshippers, but something dark, you know, uh, you know, some, some, some more of a metal band or, or, or some type of imagery like black jeans and, you know, black stuff, you know, dress in a darker fashion, but like, would you going to whatever to eat? You going to tell the fan no? I mean, I mean, Bully Ray would. He'd tell him, get the fuck out of here. He would. <laughs> like, he, he, would, he actually would. He'd like, get the fuck out of here. But, uh, I mean, it's hard, man. That's that, that guy's moment, right? I mean... Yeah, before you could do that stuff, and and and, I'm, and everybody did. I, I promise you that they probably took pictures. It just it wasn't a social media thing, and 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 camera phones and everything to to put you out there. Go, oh look, <laughs> everybody in the world sees that one picture. You know, oh look, it's the Y six. Now, uh, why are they all traveling together? I have no idea either. No, <laughs> like I don't even know if Kiss all travels together besides the tour bus, unless that was a tour bus stop or something like to fit all those people in one car. I, I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> There's a lot to look at it. Do I do I agree with him? Yes, I do. If Twenty years ago, ten years ago, do I agree? Wrestling should be like that. Yes, I do. But do I understand and accept where wrestling is right now? And I do. So 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 I do and I don't. And that's not being political. I'm just saying I understand both sides. I, I get what they're saying, like seeing Kiss without makeup. But what are they going to wear? Sheep heads and shit into the Whataburger? Are they going to come in there with a rabbit mask on? They'll whatever? draw more attention that way. But I mean, I don't know, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of pictures of Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons without makeup. You know, even back in the day. Uh, maybe not in the group together, though. So I, I think it's weird that the group was all there. Well, how many cars, how many people fit in a car when they're driving a minivan and they all fit in there? That, I mean, that, that, like, but um, no, I agree with what, what is Mark Henry. So let's go back again. Make sure I don't like, I don't want to like, because I love Mark Henry and I love Bully Ray. So, and, and I don't disagree with him, but I also think wrestling's in a, it, it, 
I think everything's situational, you know. Uh, uh, what professional I suggest? Who said this way? Why six media taking whatever? Where, which one? Bully Ray compared him to Kiss without the makeup. Totally get that, but I don't know how they're gonna wear the rabbit heads and everything. And Kiss isn't gonna go into Ruth's steakhouse wearing their makeup either. So that's a tough one. You're not gonna make ruin that guy's day, even though he is one guy out of whatever, and you're getting a character. But it's, it's just different times uh, for me. And then, uh, and uh, what did Mark Henry say? Mark Henry criticized like six photo taken. Suggested suggested a fine for breaking K mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not saying he's wrong. Back in the day, it would be like that, but like, uh, yeah, that's a question I, for you too. Yeah, yeah. What? What's the um, during your days in WWE, how did stables like the Brood and characters like Undertaker protect Kayfeb while out in public? And was there any disciplinary actions for breaking it? I, I no, uh, no. I I got sent out on third party stuff all the time, and the reason they sent me on third party stuff was because I dressed character wise like so i would have new rock boots on the black jeans the black shirt i'd wear a leather uh like uh granted it was from international mail but it portrayed a vampire long leather uh the coat and stuff and and i dressed in character and and i didn't uh do appearances without fangs and then at some point i actually had them in permanently so i was a big one on staying in characters and getting character so there's a way to get character overs they were wearing shorts and this and this and that. I think the whole travel thing is shit now, like to like that. I think like if you're uh and in a sense it's probably what they're also trying to say in a roundabout way. It's like I just like I was saying they should be dressed dark, they should be dressed in characters. They, you can take a picture with a fan and not blow character, but they're not dressed at all. They're like look like they just left the gym or something, right? You know. Where like you you should be dressed as, as your character. If you're Nikki, uh, you're Nikki Blackheart. You're gonna go around and uh, Daisy uh, Dukes and I, I don't know what would Nikki Blackheart wear. And your character in the ring, what would you wear outside the ring? Black. <laughs> you, you'd, be, you'd be wearing like black and then maybe a black overcoat, even if it was like a Stevie Nixie type of thing. Even though yeah. you would portray a little bit of a a darker side and portray that like I don't know why they were all traveling together. And all dressed that maybe they just left the gym. It looks like they might have just left the gym. I, I don't know. But I also noticed she had, I don't <coughs> know if it's me, but she had like paint. No, they're on not her gym elbow. because they're in jeans. What's that? Yeah, look at paint on her elbow. So maybe they came literally right out the studio, right? What the fuck? I think that's after the show. Literally maybe. because. It's probably after the show, but see. It looks like paint. All right. Do I, I disagree with that. bullying them? No. Uh, a fine. Uh, I think there should be a dress code. I guess WWE doesn't have a dress code anymore. Like, I. I I don't know about biz cads wearing collars and it sings all the time, but I don't think you should be traveling. And I'm always shocked when I see these guys when I run into them in an airport and they're traveling in shorts or flip flops and shit like that. I'm totally like baffled at that. That I think should be a fine. That I agree with Mark Henry on. If that's what he's saying, they, they should be dressed in character. Yeah. I, I think it, you it, you got to take a picture nowadays. You the, the way social media is. Yes, Bully Ray saying hey protect K Fabe and all that. But I think you still can protect K Fabe and take a picture. So if that's what we're getting to, I think it can be done. I think the problem is is they're not dressed like their characters. They're dressed completely opposite. They just look like any other guy or girl like walking to Whataburger. Yeah. Eat. Where they should walk mm-hmm. in there. You want to. Jimmy Hart said it. I believe he told him. Dick Clark told him that. And I think I mentioned that to you guys the other day. You dress like the fans. You end up sitting like the fans. You want to be a superstar. You want to be uh, this 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 dark presence or, or, or something bigger than life. You need to dress that part and, and act that part. They can't wear clearly wear a sheep and rabbit's head or whatever they're wearing into the thing or come in with makeup on. But their clothing and their dress style and how they carry themselves can do that. But yet, I believe you still could take a picture with fans because I did. Yeah, I got the vampire thing over. I did it, but I was always in a black bandana. I had black nail polish on. I was in black clothing when I was traveling. Uh, even if I left the gym, it was still like, it'd be some kind of like Pantera hoodie on or something very like black. It was still like character. Even even when I was training in a gym, it was still like very character driven. Um, so I, I, you know, I agree with them both. I, I think, but this time and age, there's not much you're going to be able to do about that. Uh Finding, I think that comes down to dress code in WWE and, and, and their policy. Like, like there was a, you know, I don't think we had a dress code. I, I, later on, like, when I came back and I was hurt, I never was on the road, but they had a biz casual policy. But but I always dressed in, I, I had, like, uh, even my shirts would be, like, 
black shirts that look like that leather, you know what I mean? Like that yeah, wet, yeah. like a Navy yeah. suit. Like, yeah. Not Navy, what was that plate? But whatever. Come uh, fresh, come fresh. But I would have black, it would be black, and I would have the, the bracelets and different, I just dressed the part. None of them are dressing the part, and I think maybe that's what they're seeing is just a bunch of average guys wearing shorts and T-shirts. Not average guys, big guys. They're not average guys, but, but they just look like, they, they, look like they, they just look like people like the family that would go to Whataburger on a Sunday afternoon, like or or Monday. It looked like a family instead of looking like the six six, you know. Uh, perfect example, you know, like if you watch Rob Zombie, you know, uh, uh, any house found court or whatever. The other one where they where they would just travel. I mean, they could look like that. They could wear uh, Bray Wyatt always looked like that. Bray had the tattered jeans on. You hardly ever seen him in short. He looked, he wore stuff that was very character driven. Even when we would come into the PC to do stuff, he'd have new rocks on, the jeans cut and the knees out, different things. So he always, you gotta be, you gotta believe that. You gotta, to get that over, you gotta to be that character. You know, you don't have to have the heads on and this and that. And you can certainly take pictures with fans, I think, but, but you need to be in character. Does that make sense? Like, Makes sense. I've gone around the world and everything. I mean, I'm not trying to make anybody happy, and I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with Bully Ray at all, or Mark Henry. And I'm not saying that because I'm worried about them getting upset with me. Because Bully Ray would tell me to fuck off in a heartbeat. Mark Henry would be like, "Well, I, you know, you don't see the point, or whatever." They're not afraid to tell you exactly what they're thinking, and I'm not afraid to tell either one of them what I'm thinking. I, I a fine should go to everybody in WWE. You should look the part. You should look like a superstar. That should fall under everybody, not just them in a Whataburger because they took a picture. Everybody should be dressed like professional. They should look like a star. They should carry themselves like a star. They shouldn't be in flip flops and shorts walking through an airport, or, or or gym clothes or whatever. Even if they're just traveling town to town, if they're gonna take a picture, they should make sure they're in dress the, the character or look a part of a superstar. And as far as is the kayfabe, they're trying to get something over. I don't think they should all be seen together in public, anyways. Like I'm questioning how they all were able to get to Whataburger. They all say, "Hey, we're gonna go to Whataburger and celebrate." <laughs> you know, I, you don't do that. You should have a mystery. I didn't go out a lot. And when I did go out, I was dressed two to nines. I looked like a vampire when I went out, whether I had fangs or not. But I had fangs permanent for a while there. But but I always looked my character when I went out. Even if I went to eat or whatever, uh, I always was in character unless it was like really early in the morning at a hotel and I would slip down there or I'd get room service. So I get that too. But I also am saying wrestling is where it is with the fine should go to everybody in that company. I see so many people. Cody Rhodes, I, he dresses the part. He, this looks like a star. He's in the suits, the rock, you know. If he's not the part, his arms and muscles will say he's the part. His tattoos, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but he's still, he's dressed. He's still carrying. Again, 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 he's probably one of the richest dudes in the world right now. So he's got all the money in the world to have that swag. You know what I mean? And But they're, they're, they're mysterious. They're mystique. They should be dressed at least in a darker fashion, you know, like more darker. But it is what it is. You know, they're not wrong. I'm just, what I'm saying, I see both sides and, and, but they shouldn't, they shouldn't be dressed like that at all. They, that's, that definitely, you want to find everybody, yeah, Mark Henry's right, but the whole company should be fine. It's not dressing apart or looking as their character. Oh, and what I was getting to is I got sent down on third, all the time they told me, they sent me to third party stuff. There was no dress code, but I always, they knew that I'd always be in character when I went to a third party. I wasn't yeah. going to show up in a pair of Zubas and a half, a gym shirt, you know, or a Nike shirt or something. Shorts. I showed up looking like what people would picture a gang girl looking like. Now in my older years, I, I, I admit, I have come down to like the, the black collar, the old man travel, the Nike sweat with the shoes. All black though. I tried to always wear black. Black's my color anyways, always has been. But, but, um, but, but before I would be in New Rocks, I would have the gene. I would look the part. It would be some kind of rock. I definitely tried to present. Like if I wasn't a vampire, I, you would think that I was in some kind of metal rock band or something. So try. you had to look the part. They, they're not trying to look the part there. So I get that on Mark Henry's end, but I think everybody, I mean, everybody, WWE should be held accountable to a certain standard and should be dressed like a star. And if there is no dress code, they should be expected to dress the characters. I mean, even Big Vito would wear a dress to the airport. I'm not saying do that, but but I think I don't know what that rib was or why he was doing that. But he, he, remember when he wore a dress? Remember when Big Vito wore a dress? You don't you guys don't even remember that. But they made him wear a dress on TV. That <laughs> fool would wear a dress to the airport. I'm not saying wear a dress to the airport. Oh, I, I, that's I like a lot. unless you really want to wear a dress to the airport and you think women underwear are very sexy feeling on your privates. But <laughs> as a dude, but like, but I mean, he did. But like, you, you should don't be in character. You, you know, you know what I mean. I, I guess I'm just rambling. Right, we'll just move on. I don't even know because I could talk all day because there's so many ways to look at it. But do I think they're wrong? No. And, and definitely 30, 20 years ago, they're absolutely 
on point, with everything, especially bully about protecting kayfabe and all that. But I think the biggest problem was is because they weren't dressed like characters. They're wearing, it, it, they're all in the same group. They just debut and they're wearing shorts and stuff. They should be like looking like they just killed people. Like they're, <laughs> they should at least look like the Devil's Rejects walking through there. Like, you know what I mean? That you should sense. see that group of people go, "Whoa, are they killers?" And you go, "Oh no, they're they're they're, they're WWE. They're the they're star. They're not like." Not like go. Oh, this is our, uh, the, uh, what is that? A high school? The, you know, like uh, you know what I mean. They're, they're, high school has uniforms at least. They weren't in nothing that, that said characters or anything <laughs> driven. You know what I mean? Makes sense. Or no? Yes. Yeah, Am I crazy? I, I, I Am it. I crazy or no? No. My mom and plan. Oh, sometimes I feel like I'm trying to make everybody happy when I talk, and I'm not trying to make everybody happy. Sometimes I'm trying not to be canceled because there's some shit I say that should, I would definitely be canceled if you were in my classes at school. I'd be canceled ten times yes, over. And shit you like would that. be. Everybody was coming on. It was yes, very, I very good week. Very good week. I don't know if it's because I slowed down and I'm not, unfortunately, traveling these weekends due to to an injury. But um, but training has felt good this week. I felt really proud and happy and. Felt like accomplished, like I was accomplishing something. Training the, the classes yeah. have been good this week, and I felt real good about everybody's progress and everybody's effort this week. So you know, if you're listening, which they're not, but congrats, you know, keep up the good work. <laughs> All right, so we'll move into the passing of Sika on Tuesday. Uh, his nephew, should I say Jairus? Did I say that right? Uh, I, it, this it's all right. Skip all that. Uh, okay. it, it, uh, no, no. I mean, you know, there's no need to read it. it it's a uh, 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 Sika of, of of the Wild Samoans, Alpha and Sika, right, the Wild right. Samoans. He just passed was, away. He's Roman Reigns. Like, yeah. Roman Reigns. Um, Roman Reigns' father and stuff. Um, iconic, iconic. Uh, he's done so much for the industry. You know, him and Alpha. You know, a lot of people tend to lead to Alpha because uh, Alpha was more the um, uh, like. Political, the politi- he, he would handle more of the the business deals and stuff like that. Alpha Hat would, uh, you know, he did more of that. But but uh, but Seek at the same time, he also he don't he trained wrestlers and um, you know, one of the, f- the first matches the Usos had was was on, on Seeker show. I went to um, me and Reno. I was still living in North Florida, and they're in Pensacola, Reno, and Hawaii. Uh, was living in California, but we we met up to go hang out and do Alpha show. We worked. The Usos, when they were just kids, I don't know, they were like 16 or 17. It was like one of their first matches. But me and Reno there, we want to make a good impression on, on, on Uncle Sika, you know. So he's like, get, do one of those pre-show meetings. So we go sit, we slide, we're like, oh, we're going to sit in the front row. You know, we we slide in the front row and then uh, Sika starts up. And listening to Sika is probably a lot like listening to me talk now, you know. He, he gets in there like... Starts cutting a promo going, uh, he just starts getting on people going, this ring ain't no playground. You're in my ring playing. I don't want to see you playing in this ring like a playground. You should be paying me to be in my ring to play. <laughs> you know, the wrestler. Okay. And he, none of you look like wrestlers. And I'm not going to use any of the words. I'm not going to give you the exact quotes of everything because it's much like me in class. And he's like, you know, he's like, uh, you should let the, you know, and he, I always remember because he'll always tell you. You, you don't you don't look like wrestlers you don't look like this and he would use some 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 terms I'm not gonna say and then he goes you need to let the steel straighten you out and be, be looking like the steel straighten you out you need to all get in the gym none of you look like you go to the gym you need to get in the gym and let the steel straighten you out get in the gym and work out and then then he would finish up with like at the end of the thing he would finish up with uh and and I, and you better be taking the ring down at the end of the night don't be sitting around looking for something because there ain't no envelope waiting on you you need to be giving me an envelope to be on my show <laughs> you know he would get, I was so terrified I just sat there like we sat in the front row. It was it, this speech went on for like thirty minutes of like of that, and it was. A, but uh, I, I've never picked up more uh, truer words, like like uh, straight, like I don't know, I wouldn't say hurt, but like just straight to the point, in your face words and wisdom and knowledge. And I'm like yeah, yeah, it all makes sense to me. Yeah, he's, but, but but terrified at the same time. Like is he talking to me? You know? <laughs> is he like? I wasn't gonna look for an envelope at the end of the night. I was just coming to hang out, and wrestle, you know. But but uh, he, he was truly like uh, an intimidating figure, but such a kind kind man at the same time, and um, done so much in the wrestling industry, and it's a tremendous loss. And uh, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that. It, I know that Alpha has been in ill health and in and out of the hospital, but I didn't know anything was going on with Sika, so I was caught off guard with that. So um, prayers to all the family. I, I think they're all gathering in Pensacola. Well, probably time this airs is probably already. I know that they were going now. 
So uh, just just prayers out to the Samoan families and the Nanawai and all the families and and uh, uh, rest with peace, Uncle. You know, and you know. So yeah, but there's no need to try to read all that. I, I can't yeah. even pronounce half the, <laughs> the, half the names and get them wrong and stuff like that. So like how they do things, but yeah, but yeah, he was something special. I I watched uh, the night. Uh, I sat with with Sika, um, Uncle Sika, uh, the night. Roman wrestled in the, the main event at the, out in um, California at the WrestleMania, and, and Rusev wrestled uh, John Cena and came out in the tank that that WrestleMania and stuff like. That. I was sitting with him, and he was proud. He was such a proud, proud father, proud of his yeah. son, and he should be proud of them all. All right, but, um, but, yeah. all right so we'll move on. And um, yeah, so we'll wrap up <coughs> with Jacob Fatu's debut. So he made his debut on June twenty first, twenty twenty four episode of SmackDown aligning with the Bloodline 2.0. The debut came after Solo Sikoa's match with Cody Rhodes was interrupted by Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. Fatu attacked Rhodes, Orton, and Owens, followed by a frog splash onto Rhodes through the announce table, announcing table. This dramatic entrance marked Fatu's integration into the new Bloodline faction alongside Solo Sikoa, Tama Tonga, and Tonga Loa. The debut was highly anticipated given Fatu's family ties and past wrestling achievements. So question for you is, what are your thoughts on Jacob Fatu's debut and its impact on the Bloodline storyline? And can you also give us a rundown on your relationship with Jacob Fatu and his journey thus far? Oh, when you say journey, I think of his brother or his son because he's got a brother named Journey and a yeah. son named Journey. Uh, That's a pretty name. Yeah, no, no. He's got like seven kids, Jacob. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's a, a savage, man. Uh, like, I'm glad mm-hmm. he got that job because, you know, now they don't have to, they can eat their own ramen instead of splitting ramen. <laughs> he's got so many yeah. kids. He's gonna... Man, um, did I, I see, I saw, uh, uh, we'll get sidetracked at ahead of things. Somebody had sent me a thing and said that he, he's got the werewolf, you know, the Samoan werewolf, right? That his shirt was the number one selling shirt on WWEshop.com, right? Like, that's oh, crazy. Wow. Out of one debut, that's it's amazing. It's anticipated. Um, Jacob is an amazing individual. I, I like I said when I saw the Wyatt, uh, the Wyatt six six thing. I was because I was watching the, the um, Jay or whichever Russo was because I was seeing. You know, I didn't know with Jacob when or what. He's been really quiet about things. So, uh, so I was somewhere Friday and I ha- I got a message that said Jacob debuted. So I had to go home and go to the, to the recording because it was already, I don't know where I was, but it had already, SmackDown was already over wherever I was on a Friday. Um, it was already. At the show. Oh, yeah, I was at the show. How about, yeah, <laughs> at yeah, my I was debut. at the show. Yeah, Sorry, the show. Yeah, yeah, your show. Yeah, your debut. You. Your debut. Your debut. That's right. Yeah, your debut. I was going to say, still have Then it turns Jacob. out that Jacob debuted share, at SmackDown. Sharing is caring. Um, <laughs> so, it, well, so. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> so the, the bloodline. I'm shake your hand. Sorry. I, I, the bloodline is, to me has been sh- I, I don't know where it was going. It kind of because Roman Reigns was such a prominent thing, and it was so over. And then with Paul Heyman, and then you know the, the changing of the guards and, and changing of the stories and going different directions, such a hard transition. And, and then they bring the Tongans in, and then one thing was going on. It, 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 you know, you're looking at it going, I, I don't know, know where Jacob will fit, or how this is going to work, or then, then you would hear the rumors that they were scared to bring Jacob in, that he would maybe out, outshine Sefa or uh, Sokoa, so, sorry, the, the, the Sokoa, and, uh, you know, so you didn't know what was going to happen or how it was going to happen, but or where it was even going, because, you know, you're so used to seeing Roman Reigns, and, you know, and you're a Roman Reigns fan, so you know, so, like, you're watching the bloodline, was were you, like, going, ah, this isn't Roman Reigns, and we, are you, like, going, ah, it's not the same, Where's it gonna go? How are they gonna be able to get mainly this over? Where, mainly like where is it gonna go? Like I'm trying to figure out. How right, is Roman going to... coming back? Is he gonna come back <laughs> with the Usos or, or what? Or how's it gonna play out? Or is this gonna happen in one month? Or is it gonna be a yeah. whole year back to WrestleMania and come full circle? Can they pull it off till then? You know, which you know, they're writing stories, you can. You push something down people's throats enough they can. Not they're all talented, but they uh like I don't believe they had the amount of experience. Jacob has time wise. Jacob's probably, I don't know when I trained him. It was me, uh, Reno Anawaii, his, his uh, uncle uh, Rikishi, uh, that trained him out in Knox Pro, so like um, in California. So that's a while ago. It's been like 10 or something years. He's been he's been out grinding on top and, you know, working awesome. constantly and, and, and getting experience. So, 
So you're watching the whole blood like thing, you know, where is it going to fit in? And then um, they say debuted. So I go and I see, you know, they have the match. It's Sokoa and uh, Cody and then the Tongans come in and then it's a blah, 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 blah. And then kind of like a, a rough six man. It kind of turns into whatever it was with Kevin Owens and everybody and Randy Orton and whatnot. And then uh, Sokoa's backing up, you know, and, he's, oh, and then he starts smiling. And I go, oh, this is obviously Jacob's going to come in. And, but then Jacob came in and then Jacob did what Jacob did, which I believe Jacob's better than what I saw. Uh, he's in boots and everything, but Jacob, is, he, what you saw there, he came in and whatever, ding, ding, ding. He puts uh, Kevin on, someone dropped into a, the stairs. Uh, somebody got speared or Orton through a wall or mm -hmm. something. And. Blah, blah, blah. Cody closes out. Now he pulls Cody, puts him on a thing. Bob goes up, you know, does the rock bottom on the apron. Whatever he does, boom. And then goes up and does that big splash, you know. That's just a, a fraction of what Jacob can do, you know. That's like a watered down Jacob thought too. So, but, but in that moment, he got over more than all that other bloodline, which which is, I'm happy. But at the same time, I'm like, shit, where are they still? How are they going to do this? How are they going to pull it off? How are they going to keep control? If yeah. Jacob's, and then if it's, and then, and if it's a sign that his merch became the number one selling merch, if that's true, like somebody sent that to me, a that thing, and saying that, that it was the number one on WWEshop.com, it's like, damn, like, I hope that it doesn't work against them if they're trying to keep one here, or I hope it doesn't cause a rift in the family between each other, you know, like a competitive one, which I don't think so. I hope not. But it's such a scary thing, but I, like, I'm super excited for Jacob because he's had to overcome some some uh background stuff you know childhood younger when he was a younger person and young man decisions and stuff he's made that were not the right ones he's walked uh he's been on some rough roads and now now he's he's on a better path and he's really worked hard like so like so he more than could have done this a long time ago been been in wwe uh you know two years after first start he's one of the most talented talented samoans that i ever trained and one of the most talented uh, wrestlers that i've ever trained he, and what people don't really understand or know about him, they just see him doing the, the big splash and his power moves. But he could go in there and he could he he, he could you know, hammer a lot of firemen's care. He, he can wrestle. He can go. He can sat there and go move for move with you, tick for tack, you know. Uh, um, and, and and without thinking, action reaction, like he can wrestle because he spent that extra six months <laughs> learning to wrestle some before he did the ropes. But he had all that talent to do that. All that other stuff comes out. Uh, that's you. That's your personality. That flying. That that's in his DNA. He's, he's Samoan. They, they can all wrestle to some level, to degree, above everybody else in other ways. But, but uh, like in performance, like you know, thrust kicks and some you know big moves and stuff. But he can actually go in there and wrestle, wrestle. He could go in there and, and grapple with the best of them on, on on the canvas without hitting the ropes. And that makes him unique, unique and special. He has that talent. So to add all that. His persona over it. His facials were on point. You know, he he wasn't rushing anything with facial things. I I, I would go back and I'd watch his facial, but I'd get distracted because I had never seen him in boots before. Like when he's wrestling, so it would throw me off the boots. I'm like, how's he? Is he stumbling around? Is he <laughs> falling in those boots? Is it hard for him? Because you know, he's all he's wrestled <laughs> he's wrestled barefoot since I've known him. Like I, uh, I don't even know if he had shoes when he showed up at the wrestling school. I would tell him he got training sneakers. Half the time he'd throw them off and train and. And I believe WWE is worried about him getting hurt and, you know, people, this and this and that. But he's wrestled like that for 10 years. <laughs> he showed up like that at the school. I don't know if he could afford shoes at one point. You know, yeah. that's the kind of rough road he's come on. He's got all the kids. He's got to buy all the kids stuff. He always puts his kids before himself. Always. He's a family man, first and foremost. Uh, uh, loves his kids and he'll always put them first. So, like, he probably gave them, you know, their shoes, you know, so they could go to school or so they could eat or whatever. Wow. So, like, I am so happy that he he's gone from from ramen noodles, splitting ramen noodles to filet mignon now, for the, or whatever it may be, like, in this journey, I just hope he stays the course, keeps it together, um, does the right things, you know, outside of the ring. He's never going to do the wrong things in the ring. He's just incredibly talented and has a great mind for it all. So, and under the guidance of, like, uh, Paul Heyman and different things, I think he's just, you know, there's no no limit to what he can do. But but I worry, like, I, like, like Ray, uh, 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 Jacob has the potential to... to, to, to to be the Roman Reigns, you know, even though he's not got the height or necessarily, well, I think he's good looking, but other people might think Roman Reigns is better looking. You know, Roman has a certain movie star look about him, like, like you know, Aquaman type of whatever that guy was, you know, the Jason Momosa type yeah, yeah. of that handsome, rugged, That's what it is. handsome, That's rugged, Momosa. tall look. Uh, Reno Anawaii, the Black Pearl, he has the same kind of look. He's like, 
He's got that same build. Uh, you guys don't know Reno, but he, he wrestles in California. He's a Cowboy Pro. Another Reno out of Hawaii. He, he has that really good look, and he always had that that the tall, slender Samoan. Uh, uh, not slender. They're big guys, but 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 not the not the you know the the, the Kishi or the uh, Yamaga looks really thick and burly. Jacob has that, but but I don't know. He's so he has that, but he has a presence that he could be, and it, it is truly like. His background is truly street and hood, like you know. So, if it's Pumbo, I don't know what route they're gonna go, but I'm excited for him. Uh, uh, I thought he killed it. Uh, I think he could do much better than what I saw. I, I, I think maybe there was a lot of nerves there, but he killed it though. He, it, but, but that just shows you on his thing lower thing. level. Me watching him on his it's lower level, he outshined everybody on their top of their game level when he rolled in there. And what I'm seeing that I know is a lower level of Jacob. Like, so, so the, he's, he's just gonna, there's no stopping him. If the only thing that's gonna stop him is if they quit writing him in and take him off TV <laughs> or he does something outside the ring and stops himself, you know, cause he won't do. he's an incredible talent. I'm proud, proud to be a part of his journey. Uh, so you debuted that night, he debuted. I was like a proud, proud papa. Wow. Um, you know, I trained you, but Jacob, I trained in the ring and stuff and was, and it was Reno, his uncle, uh, cousin Reno, uh, uncle, his uncle Kishi, uh, we're part of all that training all together. So well, we're all, I'm sure they're just as proud of him. And, you know, and then, but Kishi's son is solo. So, you know, Kishi's got, and, and the twins, the Uso. So Kishi's got to be super, super proud. You know, he, he's just like, he's, his lineages and, and breeding and, yeah, yeah, he breeds, <laughs> breeds well, man. He breeds wrestling strong. Factory Jacob's dad's there. Kishi's brother, the Tonga kid. So that uh, that's Jacob's dad. So TK. So you know, it's just all in that, all in there. And then, but out of them all, the, 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 where Jacob has the advantage on them is he's he's logged independent years and felt and built a personality for himself. Had to grind through the harder stuff. It wasn't just like, boom, here you go. Here's the brass ring. You know, here here you go. Like yeah. he he's he he made towns and wrestled the shows and showed he has the the the, the endurance to survive injuries and this and that and and um, and and he and he got an understanding of, of coming from the bottom to the top and not just dropping in. So I think that's an advantage. Another advantage is that he actually had to spend time and train to wrestle because he chose to, though. He didn't have to. He chose to come to class. Much like Rusev Miro, he chose to come to class. He made the classes, didn't miss them, did everything he do to get there and be in the classes. So he chose to train and chose that path as well. Not all, and it was, but it was put upon him too, but he chose it. At, at the same time, it was his journey. That was the, the path he chose. And, and I think that just it's just going to help him now. So I think him being held back these years because of the the whatever legal things and stuff he had to overcome, I think is only going to set him up to be even a bigger star now and, and a longer 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 lasting. So so I think he's on a great his journey's been awesome. If his journey was to end now, I I, I would cry and think it was a beautiful story because I never would have thought he could have got past the legal stuff to got to where he is. And but he is. He's here and that's there. So like if it was the end now, I'd go, oh, it's a beautiful story. He made it, you know, but now it's just the beginning. So I'm super, super excited, exactly. super proud as, as I'm sure his uncles and the rest of his family are. Kishi, I'm sure, and his dad, Tonga, TK, Lil Sam. So uh, very excited for him. Very, very happy and very honored to even had a brief part of his, his journey, you know, and on there. We've had him on here before. Uh, he's been in here and stuff. He's, an amazing, he's a funny dude. He's amazing. And uh, yeah, and he's real. He's real. He's a real as you get. So, you know, what you get from him, you're like, you know, you know, you know, that's Jacob. So I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing him on fantastic. the big stage. So congratulations, Jacob. Um, I'm sure Uncle Seek is proud of you too. Uh, yeah, he's looking down. I mean, and we're going to miss him. So, you know, prayers to all the family, you know, if they're all family, prayers and, and positive vibes. And, and congratulations to you, Jacob. Looking forward to your journey. More of your, more of your journey. It was already an amazing <laughs> journey, but even more of it. Yeah. And not your brother or your son. <laughs> you know, it's, it's their name journey. Too. It gets confusing. There's a lot of Samoan names to keep track of. That's why when you went to go read all the other ones, I said, just stop. Just, <laughs> just stop. There's yeah. too many of them. Just I'm stop. Like, oh, we'll just man, get to I'm the trying, point. But, trying my best. But um, where are we at, Raymond? I guess That's we got to wrap it up because oh. Nikki, Nikki, uh, Nikki has a life, I guess, other than us, you know. <laughs> well, you do too. You go to editing. I'm, I'm the one that's gonna go walk a dog and, well, actually, I go try to train yeah, the best I, still I can. I have to work but, until, but um, you know. The next episode, I'll probably uh, keep you all updated on some of the health updates I got going on. I'll, I'll know more on some dates and stuff like that. I just don't want to throw stuff out there uh, randomly right now without having. All the precise facts and stuff and yes. timelines because I don't want to send people into panic. So I've already canceled the 
few shows and I think people are, are already getting a lot of phone calls because I don't cancel and you know it is what it is and and, and there's nothing uh, nothing life-threatening anymore I was cleared of anything bad in that sense so uh, nothing there but other things that got to be done and addressed and uh, I'll have a timeline on that by the time I get on here next time so um, thank you for episode one too good to see you back in the studio Raymond always thank you so from Nikki Raymond and myself want some bad enough <laughs>